Hello and welcome to the Physio Voice. Today we are going to be discussing about frozen shoulder and activity versus structural oriented treatment approach for frozen shoulder. This study is an RCT done on 66 people with frozen shoulder. Traditionally, frozen shoulder is known to have three stages, each with different variability of pain and stiffness. The stiffness is equated with freezing of the shoulder. This is hypothesized to be similar to the learned non-use and resulting brain changes seen in patients of stroke. Why is this important for us to know? Brain changes respond to learning as a principle and learning in turn is decided by the kind of practice employed in treatment. Thus, it was hypothesized that activity oriented movement strategies will prove to be effective in frozen shoulder. as these alter memory experience intention feelings and emotion let us first see the mechanism of the learned non use the initial episode starting frozen shoulder leads to sympathetic nervous system activation which in turn leads to changes in the contractile and connective tissues surrounding the shoulder this is the this is traditionally the stage of freezing In freezing since there is a lot of pain and stiffness patient restrict themselves from doing activities and persistence of this stage leads to shoulder non use this alters the cortical representation of the shoulder joint and the associated movements in the brain which only increases the stiffness and pain perpetuating the cns activation the sorry the sympathetic nervous system activation and this vicious cycle to effectively treat frozen shoulder it is necessary to break this cycle and the most important factor to break is to decrease the reliance on external feedback and on stimulus response phenomenon employed during mobilization in frozen shoulder In this study the for the assessment purpose of frozen shoulder instead of the traditional range of motion and MMT assessment the authors used the upper extremity motor activity log and chose five activities from it which assesses the range of motion of the shoulder joint and the strength also but in functional activities which are often restricted in frozen shoulder these include putting on and taking off a t-shirt fastening a necklace placing hands behind the back to tie an apron lifting a heavy weight up to a certain height with the affected arm and lifting a heavier weight with both the arms up to a certain height to employ the learning principles in treatment those principles were compared between the two methods that is of the activity oriented treatment and the structural oriented treatment the first principle of randomized practice in activity oriented therapy is advantageous as it offers the patient variability and more options to choose from when uh, facing a real life situation in frozen shoulder this was targeted by training external rotators in different situations in different positions with only a few repetitions and less rest between the activities the activities chosen were rolling from sideline to supine sitting back on heels in quadruped and putting on a jacket the same principle in structural oriented therapy becomes more of a blocked practice as a particular pnf pattern is used to train the external rotators until it can be performed before going on to the second pattern thus providing the patient with less option or variability the next principle is of feedback feedback is of two types intrinsic and extrinsic intrinsic feedback is the one where the patient himself feels the movement while performing it and extrinsic is the one where someone makes the patient or asks the patient to get the feel of the movement The biggest difference between these two is that intrinsic feedback gives more scope for auto correction to the patient thus to alter the scapulohumeral pattern which is commonly seen in frozen shoulder it would be more convenient to ask the patient to 
how uh, to ask the patient how he thinks he can control this and avoid pain while performing a particular activity as opposed to the therapist telling the patient of actually how to doing it next feedback is of focus again focus is of two types external focus and internal focus external focus is the one where the patient is known to have a certain end goal within the context of an environment activity example here is frozen shoulder patient combing his hair as internal feedback is simply where the patient is assessing the quality of a movement without any known target for example patient lifting his arm the difference between these two is that external focus always leads to more beneficial changes in the cortical representation as a patient's motivation and personal choices are involved here the next is of contextual factors contextual factors are important as patient wants to perform his activities in a certain within a certain environment thus shaping those activities according to the need of the patient for example asking him to put on t-shirt in standing or uh, sitting position as opposed to treating external rotators starting from lying position and then progressing to standing and sitting as the strength or the range improves this begs us to the question of why not only structure oriented treatment the need for this question arose when brain research was started to understand the pathologies of orthopedic conditions the following results were found in this brain research the first one is that the stimulus response phenomenon which is based on the reflex theory is not effective for long term learning and return to activities think about it thus passively mobilizing the joint can lead to improve in function next is that the stiffness and decreased range of motion are not only owing to capsule adhesion as is thought to be in case of frozen shoulder as these changes require sufficient force than what is given uh, in mobilization of the patient lastly pain is a very complex and subjective phenomenon and individual factors individual experiences are involved in the sensation and perception of pain thus even when the peripheral structures are treated successfully it might be possible that pain returns depending on patient's contextual factors thus plasticity of peripheral structures alone might not be enough now let us see how these drawbacks are overcome in activity oriented treatment activity oriented treatment is performing the painful activities in supervision and this experience this safe experience leads to better consolidation which is conversion of long term short term into long term memory experience induced long term structural changes not only in the periphery but also in the brain thus we are directly targeting the cortical representation which has been affected next is attainment of the relevant goals decreases the subjective pain experience when patient is able to perform his desired activities with ease and finally the cortical representation is able to be regained and thus we can overcome the learned non use successfully to conclude it is said that activity oriented therapy program has a larger and prolonged beneficial effect and thus brain plasticity may be the explanation for the positive treatment results rather than plasticity of peripheral structures alone the message we want to give you through this video is that an orthopedic condition should not be viewed as only pathology in peripheral structures as any pathology has a component of central processing thus with emerging research it is necessary to learn the central involvement even in so called musculoskeletal conditions and 
to start treatment in the correct direction with proper combining of activity oriented treatment and impairment oriented treatment thank you for watching this video do like comment share and subscribe to the channel physiowise